Here we have example number two for solving systems of quadratic equations. Actually, this one is going to be inequalities. So we're gonna graph this one and then we're gonna shade the appropriate regions and find out where is the overlap of the two separate inequalities. So looking at the first inequality that we have, again, let's identify which type of conic it is. So go ahead and take a look at the x squared coefficient and the y squared coefficient. One's positive, one's negative which means that we will have a hyperbola. So the easiest way to graph this hyperbola is to put this hyperbola into standard form for the equation of a hyperbola. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you'd like to pause the video here, go ahead and put the inequality into standard form. Check your work with the solution that you see on the screen. So now we want to graph this hyperbola. So we're going to find the center. So we locate the center according to the equation. Our center here is going to be at negative 3 comma 0. So graphing negative 3, 0. We know that our a value is equal to 3 since our positive denominator is the a squared. We also know that the b value is equal to the square root of 3 which we know the square root of 3 is approximately 1.7 for graphing purposes. So our, our hyperbola, we also know, is going to be horizontal since the x term is the first term. So my vertices are going to go left and right from my center. So from my center, let's go 3 units to the left and 3 units to the right. These are my vertices. And for the co-vertices, we're going to go about 1.7 units up and 1.7 units down to find our co-vertices. From here, we can make our, make our helping box to help us make the graph. So drawing horizontal and vertical segments through the vertices and the co-vertices. We then also know that our asymptotes are going to go through the corners of the box. So Try and do this the best I can on the computer without a straight edge. Here is one asymptote going through the corners of the box and the other asymptote again through the corners of the box. And next we just need to graph the branches. So we have our left branch and then we have our right branch. So taking my right branch first, approaching my asymptotes, here I have my right branch, and here I have the left branch. Last piece, since it's an inequality, we need to determine where we want to shade. We have two options for shading. Our shading will either be here inside the two branches, so that's one option, or the shading will be outside the two branches. So it would be all of this interior space here. So those are your two options for shading. And so you want to choose a point and test a point. You can choose any point inside or outside as long as it's not on the branches of the hyperbola. So when we test our point also, you are welcome to test it in the simplified form that you did here when you wrote it into standard form or you can choose to test it here in the original inequality that's given in expanded form in general form. I'm going to choose to test it or test using the general form then I don't have to do my fraction squared and things like that and I just need to determine if the left side is going to be either positive or negative since it's less than or equal to zero. So let's test any point that's not on the hyperbola so I'm going to go ahead and test the point 1 comma 0. So 1 comma 0 is located right here. Okay. And if I test that into my original inequality, so negative 1 third times the quantity of 1 squared plus 0 squared minus 2 times 1, is that less than or equal to 0? Well, I'm going to get 1 ninth plus 0 minus 2. Yes, that is definitely negative. So that region works. Since that region works and that's true then I'm going to shade here in between like the mouth of the branches so this region here 
And then also the other branch, because of the symmetry, has the same solution. So inside that branch there. So there's the solution for the hyperbola. Next, we move on to the second inequality. So first, look at and identify which conic our second inequality is. All right, our second inequality, as you probably guessed, is a parabola. So we want to put this into the standard form for a parabola, which is pretty simple here. So here we move over the x squared and divide by 3. We get y is equal to negative 1 third x squared. So we know our vertex is located at 0, 0, and we also know that it's opening down. And our a value is negative 1 third. So we can use my favorite strategy. We graph the vertex of 0, 0, and then we're going to go over 1 and then multiply 1 times 1 third, and so down 1 third, and then sy symmetry on the other side. And then I go over 1, and then I'm going to go down 3 times 1 third. So I'm going to go down one more unit, symmetry on the other side. And then my next vertical change would have been 5 on my parent function, remembering that the vertical changes go by odd numbers, 1, then 3, then 5. So I go over 1, and then I multiply 5 times 1 third, so that's 5 thirds. So I'm going to go down 5 thirds from there, and I'm here at negative 3, negative 3. Same thing over here, 1 to the right, down 5 thirds, and I'm right here. Also, the parabola is less than or equal to, so I do want to mention that. We are going to have a solid graph for our parabola. And remember, for inequalities, always check that to determine if you have a dashed or a solid graph. All right, and then next we want to figure out our shading. So we're going to test a point again. So test any point that is not on the parabola. So what's an easy one here? How about 0, negative 1? So testing 0, negative 1. I have 3 times negative 1 plus 0 squared. Is that less than or equal to 0? So that's negative 3 is less than or equal to 0. Yes, that works also. Again, since that works, we're going to shade where that point's located. So that point is located right here inside my hyperbola. So the per hyperbola is going to eat up all the inside. And here is my solution for the parabola. I'm sorry, I think I just said hyperbola. Okay, and then we're going to look at the overlap of both of the regions. We can see that there's a tiny little sliver right here. This region that I just put in green. This is the final, final solution. So you always want to make sure that that final, final solution is highlighted extra dark. And that is the solution to the inequality. And we are finished. As we learned in class yesterday, I mean today, we started to look at conics that had this BXY term. So here we're looking at ones that had this BXY term. We learned a quick way to classify conics if the B term was a zero. If the B term was a zero, we simply looked at the A and the C and we classified the conics using the A and the C values. But if the B term is not zero, we have a different classification. So what we're going to calculate is the discriminant. So just like in the quadratic formula, the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So if that discriminant is negative, it's either going to be an ellipse or a circle. If the b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, it's going to be a parabola. And if the discriminant is positive, it is going to be a hyperbola. So now we can simply classify conics very easily by looking at the a, the b, and the c values, calculating their discriminant, and applying these formulas.